Yesterday was kind of a rough day. I was, I wasn't really having a mental breakdown, but I was kind of close to having one. It just felt like, again, everything was going wrong and that the world was crashing down on me. With my anxiety, it tries to find this evidence to prove to you that you're a horrible person. I call it evidence as if it was like a scene of a crime or something, but that's like literally the only way I can describe it. They discover the body of a young woman underneath the floorboards. I'd watch documentaries and videos on like people who've done very bad things. He is sentenced to life with a minimum of 21 years. Sometimes I would like literally compare myself to those people. In my reality, I always need to feel guilty about something in order to feel complete. Whenever I'm not thinking about this horrible dread, I feel like something is missing from me. When I took her to Brazil in August, she was really bad during that trip. Really, really bad. I remember one night I saw her struggling so much with the anxiety and like not being able to get out of the room, not willing to see anyone. She didn't want to eat. She seemed so helpless. And I remember that I went downstairs and I, I cried. I felt really, really lost. The most important thing that a parent can do for their child is to teach them that they can handle anxiety. Hi. Hi, Lillian. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Having a new tool in the toolbox for how we can treat child anxiety that doesn't rely on the child participating themselves directly is huge. But sometimes parents are a little daunted. What if they get mad at me? What if they think I don't love them anymore? I know that it'll be hard for you at first. And I'm 100% sure that you can handle it. What do you think? I just love being a mom. That's the best thing that ever happened to me. The happiest moment of my life was when I became a mom. I remember when I had her, the nurse came into the room and she said, what are you doing? You're holding the baby next to your heart. You know, she's gonna get used to your heartbeat and she's not gonna be able to be without you. But it was almost like a prediction because she was always very attached to me as a baby. Then growing up, she couldn't be in a different room. She needed to sleep with me. She had to be on my lap. She had to be next to me. She had to be touching me. Many times she would call my cell phone and I would be with her with the open phone. So she would hear me shopping. I couldn't go out at night. Whoever was with her would call me 20 times because she needed to hear my voice. I would get resentful because I felt like I had a newborn. I started to notice the obsessive thoughts. She was very hung up on certain moments when she started to be really anguished about thinking if she had killed a little fish at the beach when she returned it back into the sea. And that was a torment for her. It was almost like she was going to burn herself out. We 
worst moment in my life was probably over quarantine. I remember there were just multiple times in which I was crying because I was just so isolated from people that I was alone with my thoughts. What's real and what's not, that's just a constant battle in my head. I was worried that it was my fault that people around the world committed suicide. And I can't really go online without thinking about how, like, I might accidentally cause that for someone. My stomach drops and everything goes cold. And then it's just this constant tightening of my stomach where I'm internally trying to make sense of whatever is going on. I really don't understand, like, why I would turn out like this. The whole idea is always to make her feel better. I did everything she wanted. I never set limits. That's what you want as a parent. If you want the child to feel better. I hope this treatment is going to make it easier for her to live and to breathe and to be, you know, a functioning person. I hope she's not gonna be frozen with anxiety and fear anymore. Protecting your child from danger is one of the most important jobs that a parent has. But when it comes to anxiety, that doesn't work. Over time, children actually feel more anxious, and that can really take over a family's life in some really big ways. I worked with a family where a child had a really intense fear of bugs, and he was terrified of even touching the floor of his house. When I met that family, they had been wheeling this child around the house in a wheelchair for months because of his fear. How have the past few days been at home? The usual anxiety about homework, anxiety about uh, not having time to do everything she needs to do. Mm -hmm. But I noticed a, a shift mm. when I tell her what you told me. When I say, I know it's really hard, but I know you can handle it. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it's almost immediate. She shifts and she goes do whatever she needs to do. That's amazing. You were able to give that supportive message of I know how hard this can be. I know how uncomfortable or anxious you're feeling and I'm really sure that you can handle it. You know, parents are like a mirror that their child looks into to see who they are. And when what you see reflected back to you is a child who is weak, who's helpless, who's vulnerable, who can't deal with things, that's what you start to believe about yourself. But if you look into the mirror of your parents and what you see is a strong, capable, competent, resilient child, that's what you start to believe about yourself. I don't remember them now. With all the anxiety, she's a great A student. That's incredible. Yeah. And that is her strengths, and it's also the support that she gets from you. But where is the line Yes, because where it becomes unhelpful? To, to shelter too much, mm -hmm. then you're doing, you're having the opposite effect. Right, and what we want to do today is really make a clear plan for this coming week. Okay. For how we'll do things differently. When Francesca is coming to you with her anxiety, right? When you're feeling that pull to step in and make it okay, you take a step back and you don't do that. What does no. that make you think? First of all, she's going to get extra anxious. I think you're not wrong 
about that. I also think it's worth it mm -hmm. because what you'll be giving her, it's so much more than just this week, mm -hmm. right? We're working for her to yes. be able to go through life feeling like, yeah, things are tough and I can handle them. I think that will be the biggest present you can give to her. And how is she going to be prepared for that? The best way to let her know is for, for you to actually write out a message to her. You should just start with something really positive. That'll be a really good way of saying to her, I'm not mad at you. And then you should just acknowledge the anxiety that she's dealing with and be supportive. And then what I want you to explain to her is I've realized that by always trying to solve the problem for you, I'm not helping you. And then you just tell her that's why starting tomorrow morning when I see that you're worried and anxious, I'm going to let you figure it out on your own. That'll be our plan. Right. When every nerve in your body is yelling out, jump in there, it is really, really hard to tell yourself, yeah, that's not how I'm gonna help this kid. But we don't try to change everything overnight. We're breaking it down into manageable steps that parents can actually deal with. So the message to parents isn't just stop everything at once because nobody could. Hopefully you see some more family than we did last year with, with the pandemic. Yeah, that's it. How has it been with, with James? So, um, things have been, you know, they've been certainly improved. Let's go, James. Time to get in bed. Do I have to go to bed already? It's time. Our biggest struggle was bedtime. He was having trouble in the dark. So we had multiple night lights. And then he was having trouble with it being silent. So I put in um, like Brahms lullaby to calm him in the background. It was like a carnival in there. Sometimes he wouldn't go to sleep until he cried himself to sleep. As a parent, I don't think there is any greater struggle than, um, than watching your child suffer through something that you can't help them with. I didn't know how to be part of the support for James yeah. in a way that he needed it. That's going to be every parent's natural, intuitive response. It's like, oh, my child's in distress. I need to make the distress go away. And now we know we have a word for that, which is accommodation. We realized we were ready to take the next step and write what was called an announcement. I was very fearful. The last thing I could process in my mind was to make this situation any worse. I pictured anything from upset to anger to just a complete shutdown. We spent a lot of time like making our plans, writing, the the announcement of the plan like we thought really carefully about like what are all the things that could go wrong like how are we going to respond but it really ended up being a solid plan we presented this announcement or letter to james and he um he broke down immediately I told him that this is all of us just trying to help better support one another. And, um, and we started. Check. 
chess. Yeah? Can you come downstairs for me for a little bit? Okay. So I'm going to read you a letter. And this is part of the program. This is what Ellie asked me to, to do as my homework this week. Okay? Ready? Mm-hmm. Francesca, my love, I love you so much. I'm so proud of you. I know that you have faced difficult challenges, particularly in the last two years. I now realize that what I've been doing is not helping you cope with your anxiety. It's actually keeping you from learning to trust in yourself. So starting Sunday morning, I won't help you solve the things you and I know you're perfectly capable of solving. I know it will be hard at first, but I know you're strong and capable, and I know in the end of it, it will be the best for you. There has been crying fits. It's been hard because it's hard for her, it's hard for me. She's very mad at me. She says that I abandoned her, that I don't even care. I know that she's still there and that she loves me. It's just that sometimes when I need her help, it doesn't feel like that. She's constantly coming to where I am and saying, you know, you need to solve my problem. I feel kind of betrayed, left alone. And I'm being brutally honest here. Um, I get angry and upset. Yeah. Buddy, I love you. Love you too, Mom. Reminding James that I know things are scary and I know things are difficult and that worry is normal, but you have the power to get through things allowed me to believe I have the power to get through things. It wasn't just a quick fix overnight, mm -mm. but to feel that whoa, I think this is working. <laughs> and then to have that continue was really uplifting for all of us. Yeah. I'm astonished. The process does work. And I was very skeptical. That feeling that there was no hope started to dissipate with the treatment very quickly. And it was a complete game changer for me, certainly. Very liberating, but for her as well. I've learned how to be independent more. I learned to turn to myself to solve problems instead of turning to other people to solve my problems for me. What are you gonna make? I'm gonna make a hat with elephant ears on it. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching this, just remember that it's always gonna be okay. That's what I've learned. In the end, it always turns out a lot better than you thought it would. So, hang in there. <laughs>